What is going on guys, we have a YouTube here, back with another video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the long-awaited Scrap anti -meta deck, which I've actually promised you guys for uh, quite a few weeks, and I uh, put in the credits of a lot of my videos, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, I've been praying for the Nationals, which is in not this weekend, but the weekend after, and uh, I'll be using Chaos Dragons, but um, so Scraps have kind of gone off the agenda, but uh, it's a good deck, uh, I've used it at Locals for a good few weeks, and I've done pretty well with it, so let me know what you guys think. So Scraps have been around for a while now, but a quick review wouldn't hurt. Their basic idea is to combine Scrap Chimera and Scrap Beast to summon Scrap Dragon, usually multiple times per game. This one turn synchro move essentially to trademark for the deck. Uh, other popular monsters other than Chimera and Beast, although there aren't many of them, uh, include Scrap Goblin, Scrap Golem, and Scrap Orthros. Uh, there are others, uh, like Scrap Searcher, uh, Scrap Kong, Scrap Shark. But uh, they generally generate inconsistencies, uh, which make them somewhat unplayable. It has been argued by many people that the Scrap engine it's by itself is too inconsistent, uh, that it relies too heavily on Chimera's normal summon, and that it in itself is rather predictable. Of course, that assumes that everyone knows about the Scrap archetype to begin with. A lot of people are surprised when someone normal summons a beast, sends a bunch of back row and ends their turn. They don't really know what to do. For this reason, several other builds were devised, which combined the strength of the Scrap Archetype as semi-beastic beast-type monsters with other anti-meta components in the form of Thunder King Ryo, King Tiger Wangu, Reborn Tengus, at least before they became semi-limited, and Horns of the Phantom Beast. In the next section, I'll go through one such build, and several alternative options within it. Right, so this is the deck basically. Um, I'm just going to go through card for card. Uh, most of it's pretty standard for a scrap build. So, uh, three copies of Scrap Beast, three copies of Scrap Chimera, that's basically the engine for the deck. Uh, two copies of King Tiger Wangu. I main deck him basically because of Rabbit and uh, Dragonfly and a few other things that he doesn't allow to come onto the field. Uh, two Thunder King Ryo, just for anti meta stuff. Uh, it's great to summon your first turn, just to annoy people. Uh, I tag a green baboon because. Um, He's great in combination with Scrapstorm. Well, where you're old Scrapstorm, you'll pitch your Chimera, you'll draw a card, you'll get your Chimera to hand, and then you'll get Green Baboon to the field, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, Reborn Tango, even though he's at 2, I still feel that he's pretty playable. Gores, he's pretty much a staple. Uh, two Snowman Eaters, just for anti-meta. Uh, he's good against Rabbit decks. Um, like, the vanilla Dinos can't get over him. And uh, they bring out a lag, yeah, you can just set him. So, yeah, he's pretty awesome. Plus, he does allow you to go into... Uh, uh, Gungnir, so. Uh, Book of Moon, Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Mind Control, Monster Reborn, all staples. Uh, two Mystical Space Typhoons in Scraps, I would consider them a staple due to their chain ability. Uh, two Pod Duality, I was trying to get it up to three, uh, just for consistency, but two is fine. Um, and I, I did bump one for the three Scrap Storms, which I feel are absolutely necessary, given uh, uh, the fact that there's no Scrap Yards in the deck. Uh, scapegoat, uh, just for combo plays, to combo off Scrap Beast and Synchro into 5, 6, 7s and 8s respectively. Uh, 2 Compulsory Evacuation Device, uh, they're chainable with Scrap Dragon, which that's what makes them good. Uh, they're ready against XYZs, like Zed Mains, and just annoying stuff you want to get rid of. Uh, 3 Horde of Phantom Beast, this card is so good right now, uh, because you can give it to the Beasts, the Chimeras, the King Tigers, and the Tengus, everything. It's amazing. Plus a, a next few plus one. Uh, 2 Solemn Mornings, even though priority's gone, I still feel they're amazing against trigger effects. Two bottomless trap hole. Uh, this card has become amazing since priority has left us. Uh, Carries a mighty can't declare priority as effect. BLS, chaos sorcerer, a bunch of other stuff. And finally, two call the haunted. Um, call the haunted scrap dragon is broken, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, it's just so amazing. Uh, you can just call him back, chain him off a bunch of stuff. Haven't used your normal stuff yet. Probably get a chimera and get another scrap dragon out. And just yeah, it's just ridiculous. I used it so many times. So as for the extra deck, we have one ally just cataster. Uh, one Bionic, uh, one Colossal Fighter, three copies of Scrap Dragon, that's an absolute staple in the deck, one copy of Stardust Dragon, one copy of Maturia Beast, one copy of Maturia Barkion, one copy of Black Rose Dragon, uh, one copy of Gungnir, one copy of My Stroke to Simity Jin, it's better than your stroke, ha ha ha, uh, one copy of Utopia, and Utopia Ray, and finally, uh, one copy of Zen Meister. And a lot of these aren't worth explaining, really. Uh, Catastor and Bionic are pretty self-explanatory. As is Colossal Fighter, he's pretty good against Red Eyes, Darkness, Metal Dragon, since I have no Warriors in the deck. Uh, three Scrap Dragons, that doesn't need explaining. Stardust is fine. The Beast of the Barkian can be brought out with Scapegoat and Scrap Beast. 
Uh, Black Rose Dragon is just if things go really bad and you just want to blow up the field. Gungnir can be brought out with Snowman Eater. And Zen Meister combos with him too, since you can set the Snowman Eater back down and reuse his effect. I also love using Gungnir to uh, pitch a Scrap Beast, uh, just for his destruction ability, and then summoning the Scrap Dragon and just going crazy. Right, well it comes as no surprise that, first of all, Scrap Dragon is basically the winning condition of the deck. And that's what I'm going to be talking about first. Uh, if you get him out, you just keep popping cards, you just keep kicking ass basically. Um, and he can come out so easily. Scrap Primera is a one card Scrap Dragon, which is ridiculous. Call the Honda on Scrap Dragon, as I said, is broken. Uh, basically, if you get him out, you blow up the field, uh, you keep spamming Scrap Dragon, so there's not really much the opponent can do. So to achieve this, basically, um, you stall with cards like King Tiger Wangu and Reborn Tengu. Uh, you set your horns of the Phantom Beast and you wait till they attack into it. Uh, you get pluses, you get level fours on the field. And incidentally, it allows you to go to other level 8s, such as Stardust Dragon and Colossal Fighter. Of course, one of the best combos in the deck exists between Scrap Beast and Scrap Storm. Uh, unfortunately, it does leave you slightly open to attack, since the Scrap Beast is destroyed, and you usually activate it as a result of a chain or during the battle phase or something, so usually the opponent is at advantage for at least one turn. But uh, after that, if you have an MST in your hand, you can clear their back row, you can get the Scrap Chimera Normal Summon off pretty easily, and uh, usually things will work out pretty okay. The trap-heavy tactics in the deck are basically motivated by its rushing. Uh, it wants to rush, it wants to clear the field. Clearing monsters is the most important thing, uh, because Scrap Dragon can clear back row pretty easily. If you can stop the opponent from maintaining field presence, uh, then usually you can attack directly with Scrap Dragon over and over again. Of course, cards such as Torrential Tribute and Dimensional Prism can serve the same purpose. Finally, the matchups. Right, the top three once again. Insectors, Chaos Dragons, and Dino Rabbit. Well, since Insectors and Scraps are both decks which can sit there and pop cards without attacking, one would think that these decks would be pretty evenly matched. In a way, that's true. Uh, King Tiger Wangu does prevent Insectors from doing much of anything, uh, apart from summoning Centipede. Uh, to get rid of Wangu, they'd have to equip something to boost Centipede's attack uh, and allow him to attack over it, uh, assuming the Scrap player doesn't have a Horn of the Phantom Beast set. So it could be troublesome. However, if Scraps can't really establish themselves early, Insectors do their usual Herp Derp stuff. Not many scrap players can deal with plus twos every turn and spamming rank three and rank five XYZ. Chaos Dragons may be able to rush and go for FGKs, but without a back row, Scrap Dragon can usually be summoned without hindrance, except perhaps from Effect Veiler, so that's assuming they draw one. Uh, Call of the Hunt means multiple scrap dragons will come into the scene pretty quickly, and for those who have a Steel Swarm Roach, overlaying into him is easy given the amount of level fours, which would essentially prevent Chaos Dragons from doing much of anything. In my opinion, while the hot deck right now, Chaos Dragons could have some trouble here. That said, if BLS comes out, Scrap Dragon can't do much. And there's one thing that Scrap Dragon and other Scrap cards hate, it's being banished. Now, I've beaten Rabbit players before, if I bring in a first turn Scrap Dragon, a feat uh, unachievable except with Summon Monk. But Rabbit is another troublesome deck with Scraps. First turn Lagia stops Scraps from doing much of anything. First turn Wangu, however, does stop Rabbit, which somewhat even things out. Still, with the amount of pluses that Rabbit players can get, as well as access to Dolka, Forbidden Lance, a bunch of other annoying stuff, I can't see Scrap players establishing much field presence once Rabbit has asserted itself. But if Scraps get early advantage, it, you know, they could get the win. So in conclusion, uh, I would simply say that Scraps are good, but they're a little bit too slow for the current meta, so I wouldn't recommend them for competitive tournaments. Uh, definitely at locals for fun, they're good, so you can use them there. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's it for the video guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll have a couple other videos coming up soon, including an inquiry into the recent successes of the Chaos Dragon archetype and why, in fact, it's so good. Uh, I have actually reservations about the deck, despite the fact I'm using it at Nationals. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, all that jazz. See ya.